Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2020 release, Hubie Halloween, which is a Netflix original. It's an Adam Sandler film. And two things. One, I'm sure a bunch of people seeing this on my channel were pro are probably thinking, wow, I never thought he would actually watch that film and review it. But, you know, I've seen some buzz about it. I've, I've seen some people say they actually like it. I'm seeing, seeing people who say they hate it. Probably more people saying they hate it than, than people saying they like it. So one of the things to address up front about the film is that if you don't like Adam Sandler, specifically when Adam Sandler plays characters, uh, specifically characters that are kind of similar to the water or Bobby Boucher in The Water Boy or Nikki in Little Nikki, you know, doing those types of voices and being kind of a bit of a simpleton, you won't like this film because there's a lot of that. You know, it, it focuses on a character that is played by Adam Sandler who is, you know, doing that voice, doing that type of character. And once again, very much like Bobby Boucher from The Waterboy. So if that if you don't like that, if that annoys you, you should definitely steer clear of this film. Now, I will say that I have typically been a fan of Adam Sandler. Obviously, his older stuff is what I really like, but some some of the stuff that he's put out on Netflix uh, in, in the past few years has been okay. Uh, mainly stuff that he's not so much been in, like uh, the David Spade films, the you know the Father of the Year one was actually pretty funny, and the Wrong Missy one was at, I thought was quite funny. I enjoyed that one actually. Uh, and the um, there was like a murder, I forget what it's called, but there was like a murder mystery one that was on there, and that one wasn't bad. But there are other ones that are you know not not great. So. Uh, I'm not going to say a ton about this film, especially because I'm not doing spoilers with this because it just came out. So I, I'm not doing spoilers for that. So let me talk about this a little bit. It is not directed by Adam Sandler. Some people may assume that, but it's done by Stephen Brill, who's done, um, just to name a few of the other films he's directed, Heavyweights, which is a great film still today, Little Nicky, Mr. Deeds, and Without a Paddle, just a few. Uh, written by Adam Sandler as well as Tim Hurley. Now, Tim Hurley has been a longtime collaborator with Adam Sandler, so a lot of the films are very similar. I'm not going to talk about stuff Adam Sandler's done because everyone knows what Adam Sandler's done. But Tim Hurley, some of the, the better stuff he's been involved with, he was involved in writing scripts for Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, The Wedding Singer, The Water Boy, Big Daddy, Little Nicky, Mr. Deeds. So he's been there for a lot. Um, that and plus further. So, yeah. Uh, and one of the best things about this film, cameos. There are a lot of cameos. And there are a lot of cameos from films prior that, that uh, Adam Sandler has done. And then there are some newer cameos for people who haven't been in Adam Sandler films before that are fun. And that's one of the great things is when you just see these characters popping up. I'm not going to say any of the people who are in cameo positions, but, um, or cameo roles, but, uh, it's just nice that as you're going along with the film, you see, oh, that celebrity. Oh, that celebrity. It, it's a fun thing. Uh, the other thing is if you are a true Adam Sandler fan, or if you've seen a lot of his older stuff, you will get references because there are a bunch of references that are kind of callbacks to older Adam Sandler films. And I found that kind of fun, especially me being a person who was a fan of the older Adam Sandler films. So that's a nice thing as well. They don't waste time getting into the comedy. And I did like that. You know, if it's a comedy, you got to get to the comedy. Now, that was a good thing about it. The problem with this film is that the comedy is actually good for about the first 20 minutes. And then after that, it just really peters out and it peters out pretty badly. Um, I legitimately was laughing out loud for, for new, well, numerous times within the first 20 minutes or so because it was legitimately funny. But as soon as they introduced the actual story of the film, I don't know why I did that. There is actual story to it. It's not complicated but there is a story once they introduce the actual story of the film it's like they tried to do some jokes but the jokes just didn't fit and they just weren't funny it just kind of seems like they started the script and they were really inspired so they got all these really good jokes you know thrown down because it, it felt like at that point they weren't you know their their hands weren't tied by the actual story then once they got to the point where okay this is a story we want to tell they felt like you know, it was a little bit harder to properly incorporate good jokes with the story. It's just not funny after that. And that's what really sucks. Like, it takes a huge downturn. 
and then it just gets kind of depressing <laughs> to be honest um it's still you know there's still some fun to be had with it and i don't hate the film but this is definitely a film for me that's a one-time viewing just a one-time viewing i'm not upset that i spent the time watching it i'm fine with that but i won't go back to it most likely um I will give you a, just a quick synopsis, like a sentence or two about it. It's basically about this guy named Hubie who lives in Salem, Massachusetts. And yes, they shoot part of it in Salem, Massachusetts, so that's cool. Um, this guy named Hubie who lives there, he's a simpleton. Like I said, he's a character much like Bobby Boucher from The Waterboy. And he gets bullied a lot by the townsfolk. And it's just basically about how much he loves Halloween. He's always loved Halloween so much. And then finally for this Halloween, he's out about trying to, you know, make sure everyone's safe. And then something starts happening. Some people start disappearing. And Hubie is on the is on the case to try and figure this whole thing out. So that's basically the synopsis of it. It's not, like I said, it's not a very in-depth story. There's not a lot to it. That's why I'm not going to, you know, break out themes and stuff. I mean, there is a point to it of bullying because it's very much about bullying hubie gets bullied a lot in the film and sometimes way too much i felt like they pushed the bullying way too far in a lot of a ways to a point where you just start feeling bad about it and especially that coupled with the jokes not being funny anymore like it lightens it up and you're just like it doesn't make you depressed basically when there are jokes rolled into it that are actually funny, which happens in the beginning. But then once the jokes aren't really all that funny anymore and they keep throwing on the bullying and it just keeps going and going, it just feels like it's overboard. It feels like it's way too much. And you're just like, A, we get the point that he's bullied. B, it's just getting brutal at this point. <laughs> and it's just, it's too much. So, yeah. But then it's also this thing of just beating a dead horse. Like, how many times can you show the same type of thing over and over and over again? Give us something a little bit different. You know, you can stray away from the story and just have, like, random jokes here and there just to be funny. And that would have been nice with the film, but, you know. So anyway, um, in the end, I think the ending was okay. I actually was okay with what everything ended up being, like, the resolution at the end of the film. That's fine. And the whole idea behind, you know, the point made with bullying in the film is that, you know, usually people who bully others do it because they're insecure with themselves and they're just being jerks because they don't know how to look inwardly and solve their own problems, basically, and deal with these insecurities that they have, which is true. I mean, that's totally true in real life. You know, if there's someone's being a total a-hole to you uh, or anyone in life, it's because they're a sad person. They're insecure and um, they're weak and they just take it out on other people because they don't know how to how to figure their own life out and, and fix whatever problems they have or even recognize the problems they have in the first place. So so it makes that point and that's fine. Um, let me look back to my notes real quick. Uh, the One of the things I, I touched on, I said it takes place in Salem, Massachusetts. So you do get some actual shots of Salem if you've ever been there, you'll recognize some of the stuff. I I was lucky enough to go a bunch of years ago for Halloween. A lot of fun. So if you like Salem and you like Halloween, it's cool for that reason. The visuals are good. Directing-wise, acting-wise, cinematography-wise, music-wise, all that stuff's really good. Technical standpoint, really well done. Looks great. And if you just want to watch a movie that's light and it feels like Halloween, it definitely feels like Halloween because it's in Salem and it's on Halloween. I mean, it before Halloween. Actually, I think the whole thing is in, in one day. So it's on Halloween. So it's very, you know, it's it's cool for that that aspect of it. Um, do, 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 do. I already said that. I already said that. Uh, yeah, the comedy. That's just one of the biggest problems. Yeah, the mystery reveal. Like I said, that's, it's okay. So that, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. I just wish the jokes were better. I wish you, they, you could take the the joke style from the first 20 minutes and carry that through for the whole, like, hour and a half of it. Um, yeah, but but um, I didn't hate it, like I said, you know. So anyway, you know, make up your own mind based off of what I just said. There will be people who watch this review and are just like, yep, that seals it. I'm not watching it. And then there may be people who are like, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely watch it based off this. Or some people who just 
don't even care. They just wanted to see what my opinion of, of it was, which is fine. So anyway, that takes me to the rating. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm, I mean, I'm going to give it a two and a half because I do feel very in the middle on it. Um, I, I was between a two and a two and a half. If I gave quarters, I would definitely go a 2.25. But um, the fact that the first 20 minutes actually was funny and I did laugh and have a good time for, for that portion and the fact that the story resolution at the end is actually not bad. It's okay. Um, that, that puts it at two and a half. So I'm pretty much in the middle on it, but you know, make up your own mind and let's talk in the comments about Hubie Halloween. Go ahead. Spoilers. No problem. Spoilers in the comments. Let's talk about it. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you feel eh about it? Like me very much in the middle. Let's, let's find out, but do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button. Um, if you like this video or any video I've ever done, that's the best way to repay me. And it is quick and painless and it costs you nothing. It is free. So take that one second, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate that. Also hit the notification bell real quick. And that way you'll know where, whenever I'm putting up a new review video or an unboxing or doing a live stream or any of that good stuff. But regardless, thanks for taking your time to watch this and until next time, keep it brutal.